And we're back with some more oxygen not included on Rhyme. And today we're going to be trying to fix this, well, not fix, uh, refine this uh, this rocket chimney. Uh, the first problem we've got is, well, this is not able to process enough steam fast enough. It seems this two tile high gap can't pull in enough steam to keep these three steam turbines running and we need to be able to extract at least five kilos of water per second. Right now we're, we're, we're not even getting four. So my thinking is, let's move this entire thing up one tile. It'll be a bit tricky, but if we move it all up one tile, we'll get one extra tile of space. Maybe, maybe do two tiles? If we do two tiles, you know what? Let's do two tiles. Let's not half, half arse these things. Might as well get it done right the first time. So we'll move it up two tiles. That'll give us far more space to pull everything through. This looks like it should have a lot more throughput. I uh, took a little bit of rejigging. I had to turn off the piping as well. All of our cooling is currently offline as we redo all the piping. I also may have to inject some more super coolant down the bottom, but... But it's almost done. This this should be able to process six kilos of water per second, though it will take a while to find out. It's going to take a while to drain this chamber, though we should hopefully still get that cool animation effect as it sucks it in. Anyway, let's, uh, let's see what this looks like in operation. Cooling is flowing again. Everything's back to normal. And let's just check that to above. So I will have to run this for a while before, before I can be sure that it's pulling in the correct amount. Let's see, what's the pressure over here? 27 kgs. Yeah, that's plummeting rapidly, though. It's never going to be able to keep the same pressure as is over here. I wonder at what point this is going to start giving up. I mean, if I drain down the pressure low enough to say one kilo, it's definitely not going to be able to keep up. But will it will it work down to five kilos? Uh, I'm not sure. Mm. Well, that's some testing to look forward to, isn't it? Uh, also, this, this has turned out to be quite conveniently located, almost. Uh, well, yeah, this neutronium will never be damaged, and we've got bunker tiles down here, so that if, even if a, a meteor comes in at an angle, it can't damage this corner. And uh, as well as that, the, the mining drill here will make sure it never clogs up. So this should be perfectly safe and durable forever and ever and ever, if needs be. We're down to 15 kilos of pressure over there. Yeah, it's trading that pressure down pretty quick. Yeah, well, that's that done. I still need to get in here and start doing some uh, changes. I think I might get rid of these, uh, these set of doors. I don't think I need them anymore. If I get rid of these doors and maybe replace them with something uh, a little bit faster. Uh, the reason being, I want to be able to get up here and gain access. And we're going to have to strip out some of these tiles and replace them with, uh, you know, temperature shift plate type tiles. Because you'll see here, the uh, the temperature up here is rather hot. We haven't been doing anything too crazy. So the plan is, run in here and then install a lot more temperature shift plate lines. We want to have uh, temp we want to be injecting temperature directly into those uh, those walls as much as possible. Temperature spikers installed. Well, whatever you want to call them. Long strings of temperature shift plates. Mostly igneous rock. The final one here at the end is diamond, just to make sure it injects the temperature as quickly as possible. That should hopefully keep evening out the temperature in here. Randy, what's the temperature in here getting to? Where is it? Yeah. The rhyme map is looking distinctly not rhyme in a lot of areas. Oh my god. Especially over here. That's where the hydrogen vent is, and there's another hydrogen vent up there, so it's... Uh, yeah, the only place that's incredibly cold is our cryo brick. Our cryo brick is at minus 100 and something degrees. That's where I'm dumping uh, the gases. I've set up some gas pumps down here just to extract all the gunk that lies down at the bottom of the map. And so far they have accumulated, well, they've extracted quite a bit. And when I say quite a bit, I mean they've dumped it all in here where it's just getting frozen into liquids and solids that we don't have to care about. Convenient way of disposing of things. But all that done, what we want to do now is I want to get up into the top half of this uh, silo and I want to start installing temperature shift plates up here as well. It's going to be necessary. I'm going to want some temperature spikers out here as well. Oop. That would will be a little bit of a dangerous task. Oh, and uh, pressure-wise in here, this is 5.3 kilos. I'm not sure. It seems once you go below about, 20, below about 20 kilos, these things can't keep up. It seems cutting this hole out just will not get me enough throughput. I either have to start cutting multiple holes, which I'd rather not do, or I can start sticking gas pumps over here and having them push the gas over there. I didn't want to do that, but that may be my only choice. Well, the construction projects continue. I have installed the temperature shift spikes around here. Uh, at the same time, I've started putting in a sort of a, a faster closing section up here. I've stripped out those uh, bunker doors that were down around this section, and instead I've put in a couple of, uh, well, a few mechanized airlocks. The mechanized airlocks uh, job is to, well, close really quickly. Once the rocket goes away and, or is launched, and it says close the doors, instead of waiting 30 seconds or so, 30 plus seconds for these to close, these will close and stop the steam escaping. Assuming we can get them finished. The problem is there's now a rocket on the way back, and yeah, I think the rocket is going to arrive before these doors get finished, which means it'll smash them, but hey, you can't, oh. Nope, nope, we got him just in time. 
Ah, perfect, perfect. Well, you can't make a, a silo without breaking a few doors, I suppose. Uh, one thing I w did want to do, it was my initial instinct, and I, I actually did it, was I got these doors and I built them right up here, right up tight against the bunker doors. And I'm like, yeah, I'll just stick them right up there, they'll be perfect. But then I realized when uh, there's no rockets coming in right, these get locked by automation wires. So the automation wires locked them, meaning there was no way to open the doors, which meant there was no way to repair the bunker doors. If the bunker doors, yeah, for example, if those are tight up against that, there's no way for me to repair the bunker doors if they ever get damaged. So this is why this door is here. This door is to allow duplicates to get in here and repair the bunker doors when they inevitably get smashed. It's going to happen at some point. Uh, these are down here to try and seal things off so that we lose less steam. Yeah, we managed to save about a kilo of steam there. Kilo of steam pressure on average through this room. I think that was worth it. We'll have to see. And why is that temp shift plate diamond? Why is... It? Am I out of diamond? Please tell me I did not use all my diamond. I have used all my diamond. Um, I didn't think that was possible. There's, yep, another one missing there. I am venting gas out through those holes. Ah, buggery. Okay, I need to replace those with something that is not diamond but is still a good conductor. It doesn't have to be perfect, but yeah, let me think about this for a second. And the choice at the end was iron. I'm going to use iron to make it out of it. It's not as good a conductor as diamond, but I've got plenty of it and it's fairly cheap. Uh, oh yes, and the rockets are going to be launching and landing a lot. We've only got two rockets running in the silo so far, but now that we know rockets can't crash into each other, well, I was thinking we could migrate over our other rockets. Uh, for example, well, okay, the research rocket, not so much, but we have a couple of cargo rockets here. Why let all of their joyous heat go to waste? All of the heat they're producing could instead be just dumped into our, our rocket chimney. Okay, this won't be good for Santa. Santa, It might get a little bit crispier for Santa than we were anticipating. Actually, let's check the temperatures over there. What kind of temperatures are we looking at in here? Ooh, almost 200 degrees. I mean, Santa will be fine. He'll be fine. You know, he's handled hotter temperatures. I'm sure there's chimneys out there that are hotter than that. Um, but yeah, we're going to migrate all of these over. Once I finish doing the science... Yes, it's 1,500 cycles into the game, and I haven't bothered getting all the science done. Yes, I'm going to shred a bunch of those, but I, I don't care. I keep having to rejig that rocket to uh, get out to the different planets. And, oh, that's enough of that. Uh, uh, that will get repaired anyway, but yeah, I think we can migrate those, those two rockets over, and they're pretty close by. What, where are they going to again? If I recall, it's, yeah, they're going to the second and third planet, so the turnaround times will be pretty good. We can stack them into, into this... Uh, into the rocket chimney just right on top of these two or maybe one below it i mean i do have all this space down here i could use and i could maybe tack on no 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 we're gonna tack it above it's it's deep enough i am not adding on any more infrastructure this thing is already completely ridiculous um i'm gonna have to do something over here though if we check we're getting an output of about we're, we're getting less than five kilos of water out per second i need to do something to drain even more water out of here this is i can't believe that a four tile high gap with what, 20 kilos of steam pressure behind it can't give us that much throughput. Uh, the mechanics you learn about, though it does give us this rather cool looking animation. I have to give it to the game devs for that one. That does look ridiculously awesome though the steam is getting sucked in like that. It gives you a nice graphical representation of what's happening. You kind of know just by looking at it. Anyway, uh, oh, why is that missing? What happened there? Oh, that's where the bunker doors went. Eh, well, uh, yeah, I think we'll leave that there as a sort of a catcher for meters. It helps narrow down the amount of damage that can go through there. Same up here. By narrowing it down at these two points, it just means uh, meters that come in at very weird angles can't get any uh, deeper. Oh yeah, maybe gas pumps. No, no, no. Stop, stop, stop. Yeah, we'll finish this off and uh, actually, you know what? Let's not finish the steam extraction system just yet. Maybe someone out there has a better idea of how to get the steam out. We could, of course, always put in the gas pumps. We could do several things. If you have any ideas, drop them into the comments. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start migrating rockets now. I want more steam pressure in here. I mean, theoretically, if I have more steam pressure in here, that will force more steam through. Also more heat and put more stress on the system. But, you know, we'll, we'll see. Oh, and I should probably put in another steam turbine right there. Uh, another steam turbine right there would also help drain some of the heat out of this area. This is why I should have really done this straight up before I let in the hydrogen. I'm venting a bunch of hydrogen into the background of space every time I, I remove one of these backing tiles. You can't place a brick over a backing tile. So, as you'll notice there, yeah, nothing I can do. So I have to remove the backing tiles, lose a bunch of gas into space, then put in the the, the building I'm trying to get in. It's frustrating, but uh, on the bright side, what I was able to do here was remove the bunker tiles on either side and replace them with mafic tiles, or insulated tiles. That way I was able to stick in the door without overheating the whole place. Just, uh, it's the little things in life that make it simpler. Anyway, uh, time to put in some diamond plates here. 
Done. Dusted. I think that's going to be the final steam turbine. Well, I'd like to say that's going to be the final steam turbine, but you never know. You never know with these monstrosities. These things have a tendency to keep getting out of hand. If we put in too many rockets, we may need more cooling, though I am not sure where we're going to squeeze it all. Uh, we'd have to start double stacking the steam turbines, putting one beside the other, and considering the amount we already have in... um, How many do we have, actually? 40. There's 40 steam turbines here, all going up the sides of this uh, launch silo. Or rocket chimney. That does not include the three steam turbines here. These three, uh, I'm not even including those. They don't count. They're just there for water extraction purposes, which they're, they're, they're not able to keep... Well, they, they can't extract enough of it because there's just not enough steam pressure in here, which means we need to add more steam pressure. Oh, and that's finally kicking in, is it? Yeah, since I had no diamond for a temperature shift plate there either, we also went with a temperature shift plate made out of iron. It's not as great. It's got a 55 thermal conductivity. Diamond has a thermal conductivity of 80. But... You know, for what we're doing, it will work just fine. It does the job, and it's cheap. Next up, next up, it's time to start installing some more rockets. We we need some more steam pressure in here, and we have a giant silo in which we can install, well, all of our rockets if we want. The hard part here, though, is going to be hooking up all of the piping. Uh, I wasn't intending on stacking in more rockets. Uh, that didn't seem like a smart idea because I thought they'd start crashing into each other. So I haven't planned ahead for this at all. We're just going to need to extend this uh, hydrogen link straight up into the next rocket. And I think once I built the base and the base of the rocket, I can just uh, demolish the bottom scaffolding and we shouldn't have to worry about rockets crashing into us all the time. Well, hopefully. Uh, actually, one second. If we put a ladder segment across there, we can just... Oh. That temperature shift plates? Never mind, I can't build on top of temperature shift plates. Tell you what, we will just throw some mesh tiles across here, and uh, we will build a rocket silo on top of that. I think that's all we need. Yeah, wait, why didn't you build over that? Yep, never mind, there we go. Now the plan is, throw down a rocket engine here, then we can demolish these mesh tiles beneath it, and we should be able to just launch a rocket right from here. I could, of course, have crammed it a little bit closer, but I'm not too worried about uh, jamming the, the ass end of this rocket in the face of the, the rocket beneath it. We're only going to be putting two or four more rockets in here top, so we've got plenty of room, probably. All I'm trying to do is get this all done before another rocket comes down here and starts smashing into things. It may not smash the rocket, but it will definitely smash the mesh tiles. And, yeah, now we should just be able to build rocket a rocket on top of this, and it should be... fine? Yeah. Uh, I also made... sort of the, one of the reasons I left this gap here on these uh, ladder segments across... I sort of want to be able to get down this side just in case I need to repair any of the piping. Uh, things like that. It just, it's more convenient. The same way I'm going to be leaving that latter segment down there. It does leave more things to be repaired when the rockets inevitably, or when the uh, meters inevitably get in there, but uh, I can live with that. Did you ever get the feeling that your health and safety department is probably not giving you a safe workplace? <laughs> yeah, it turns out expanding your rocket chimney while there's rockets actively launching and landing in it makes things a little... Interesting for duplicants. Their life gets uh, a little bit more full of uh, surprise. It's uh, it's a little bit distracting. I'm not going to lie, but uh, yeah, they can they can repair that stuff up. It just gives them uh, more work to do. I'm doing. I'm trying to. Oh, there they go again. They can repair that too. I'm just trying to rejig the piping here, uh, so I, I can get uh, I can get all the liquid oxygen in and out. That's the plan. Uh, you can be broken there. Perfect. I can demolish some of this. I just need a little bit more space here so that I can squeeze through the liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen. I haven't quite hooked them up yet, but uh, I only have enough insulation to do the liquid hydrogen. The problem is I can't find enough isoresin. Isoresin is in is very rare on this map, it seems. On other maps, I've had plenty of isoresin and difficulty finding fullerene or vice versa. This one, I'm swimming in fullerene and have a difficult time finding the isoresin necessary for the insulation. But we've got just about enough we should be able to pull this off and get our next rocket launching soon enough. Rocket complete. All we need is a brave soul to be on board and a name for the rocket. Uh, for that brave soul, we are currently getting uh, Quicksilver here. Quicksilver here will no longer be assigned to that command module. They can go off and actually let, let's let them grab some lunch and stuff first. They're probably a bit stressed out. They've been trapped inside that rocket for a few hundred cycles. You know, maybe go use the bathroom, uh, grab a snack, all that stuff. But then we'll put Quicksilver in here. So we have to go put a name for the rocket. Now I'm going to pull one out of the comments. Twilly Willy in the comments suggested that uh, we name them Chris, Cr uh, was it uh, Crispy Kringle? <laughs> Crispy Kringle, after the fact that, uh, yes, yeah, St. Nick is going to be rather crispy after they pass through this rocket cello. Spirit of Progress Apollo. No, 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 no. 
Crispy Kringle it is. Yes, there we go. You you are now Crispy Kringle and you should be heading to, heading to that uh, metallic asteroid when the time comes. Uh, automation in place. We can turn it on and off as needs be. Once we get Quicksilver on board, we'll wait until... I'm going to let uh, Quicksilver's morale get back up and their stress get reduced. I, I just... I would feel like a monster just throwing them in there just now and I haven't played enough Room World for that yet. Uh, how are we looking at the steam turbines? You can see that the, the steam pressure... Just the way this works, this game works at the moment, is the steam pressure down here is quite high. It's about, what, we're looking at 50, 60 kilos down the bottom. That's because that's where most of the steam comes out. But then as you go up, you'll see the steam pressure keeps dropping off. It doesn't emit as much steam the higher up it gets in the rocket. And as well as that, this place up here is just sucking it up. It's just draining all the steam out of the area. What's the pressure down here, up here, like, 11? Wow, 11 kilos, 14 kilos. Yeah, so all the steam is just getting siphoned in here, and the pressure is dropping more. Oh, yeah. Whatever ideas you have, let me know in the comments for how to uh, to fix this one because mm, I have a few ideas, but this one this one seemed like it would be a good idea. It just uh, didn't quite have the throughput we were hoping for. Oh, another great idea I heard was uh, grabbing a power or is it uh, grabbing a steam turbine? This one here, but uh, just a slight modification of the previous one. Instead of covering the whole thing in bunker tiles or insulated tiles, you put bunker tiles all there in the edges. One insulated tile there. And then we've got a steam turbine in here, but you siphon out all the gas and just put in a thin layer of liquid along the bottom. Oh, one second, that can also go. And you'll notice there's only one insulated tile, so there's only one thing that can get hit. It drastically reduces the chances that will ever get smashed open. It reduces it to almost zero. It would take, I think, two or three... It should take at least two metal meteors hitting that at the same time before a dupe gets along to repair it. So we could theoretically start jamming these into the tube at different locations. We'd have to cram in some uh, chilling and stuff like that, but uh, yeah, it might work. It might work. Anyway, uh, we'll find out what your suggestions are. Next up, though, we want to get a, 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 a duplicate in here and we want to see how much hotter we can make this, uh, this chimney. Well, Quicksilver's aboard. I couldn't wait any longer. It was taking too much time. Plus, they, they've got their morale up. They were, yeah, they were pretty happy. Uh, once we get the scaffolding deconstructed, I think we're ready to have a, a three rocket, three rocket chimney. Dear Lord, this thing is kind of getting a little bit out of hand. How much, how many more rockets can we cram in there? We can cram in a lot. We can cram in a lot more rockets if needs be. I think I could launch probably about 10 rockets of this size out of this. Though, I would never be able to deal with the heat. As it is, the bottom of this silo is just chock full of heat. There's nothing we can do about it. Uh, let's see if that works. Have I set up everything correctly? That should be fine. Do we have ignition? No? Seriously? What did I do wrong? Oh. I messed up two pieces. We're missing the automation wire there, which we can fix pretty quickly. All we got to do is just deconstruct this tile. Done. Hook up the automation wire finished. Rocket should crank open the doors and then we should see ignition. And what's the temperature in here? 200 degrees, dear lord. I want to see how much power we're getting out of these steam turbines in a minute because it's sort of getting to that ridiculous level. Oh, I didn't turn it on. I had it. It was on already. There we go. But uh, it's getting to that ridiculous level where we have so many steam turbines running flat out. I think we're, we're, we've got to be well over the 15 kilos mark. Oh, 15 kilowatts mark. Oh, yeah, my game slowed down. I can't even keep up with the rockets on that speed. We have to slow it down to minimum speed before I can keep up with them. I may have to go on a regular clearing spree. <laughs> uh, there goes the last one. Uh, so it's three rockets set up, and I stuck in an extra space scanner up here. This is going to be, I don't know, my space scanner repository. So this one's set to Crispy Kringle, St. Nick, and Santa Slay. So all of them are, are good to go. Let's have a quick check on the power front here. I want to see how much power this monstrosity is generating. This might not be a good time to do it. There's a lot of launches and landings going on right now. It's going to uh, skew the numbers quite a bit. Uh, how are we looking? God, we've got... Okay, we've got several rockets on the on the fly at the moment. I think we'll have to just wait a bit and maybe wait until it's canned. And I'll wait until that rocket launches, give it a cycle, and then uh, check the power levels then. Otherwise, we might get a little bit higher than is anticipated. So considering that even the ones up here at the furthest point from the bottom of the side are doing 540 watts, yeah, even just spread that across 30... Uh, or was it, was it 40? 40 steam turbines? Yeah, that, that, that's 20 kilowatts. If all 40 of them are doing at least 500 watts, that, that's 40 kilowatts. <laughs> okay, that's energy. Uh, where is it? Status. Potential current, potential load. Okay, is that 
have I messed up and not connected the wires? No, no, connected all the way up. Uh, ah, you need to be connected there. Everything else, yeah, all connected, all connected. Wow, that's that's all gold as well. That's probably the most expensive power spine in human history. Well, duplicate history. Uh, also, that connects all the way across here. This is probably my weirdest power spine. Yeah, I think, I think, yeah, that's all connected. Damn, there's a double spine. I should have just. Yeah, no, no, that that worked out. It's done. Uh, so we'll hook that up and we'll see what kind of power readings we're getting out of the sucker. Checking our power produced. We are producing 59 kilowatts of power. <laughs> oh, Christ. <laughs> oh, okay. So that's what we're actually producing right now. That's, um, damn, that's, we're producing more power than we could potentially consume even if we turned down all the machines we have. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. This is, uh, this is completely ludicrous. And I think we're still water positive. Yeah, even with three rockets running, we are definitely well in the water positive range. Even with about three and a half kilos of water, we should be, we should be well safe. Okay, what's next for this thing, though? Truth is, I have no idea. Um, well, I want to definitely move over the last rocket. Uh, this rocket over here needs to be, like, this rocket here. This rocket here has been transferred, but this rocket here also needs to be moved over. That one was targeted towards this planet, so I need to put in that rocket as well. However, I don't have enough insulation yet. I need to keep harvesting insulation from space. Have I replaced this? No, this is all ceramic up here. Oh, it's a pity. If I had some more uh, insulation, I could definitely move the rockets over now, but I can't. But I think we can decommission these rockets here, uh, scrap up the steel, and uh, prepare for moving the rocket over once we get some more hands and some more insulation. That took far longer than I thought it was going to take. Um, yeah, there was just, you have to remove the power wires, you have to redo all the liquid cabling, you have to do, remove all the automation, the ladder segments, the bunker tiles, everything. But it's all gone. It's all tidied up. We're left with a whole bunch of um, space artifacts that I still haven't found a use for. Which reminds me, I also have to put in a cooling system over here. These robo miners have overheated twice since I installed them, and I haven't bothered putting in the cooling solution because I have been too busy being lazy. Uh, you know, installing a, a rocket chimney for Santa Claus. But the rocket chimney is 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 working out extremely well. Ah, this is what I was afraid was going to happen eventually. With so many rockets, we've got three rockets coming in and out of here, so the doors, and there's only one set of doors, so the doors will be open, well, a lot. They're going to end up open quite a lot of the time. And meteors are going to get in, and we're going to end up with carbon dioxide getting in. But it does seem to just be trickling down. <laughs> there goes another rocket. But trickle down as it will, once it gets to the bottom, it will get filtered out. It shouldn't get jammed in here. Though, oh no... Is it? Is that going to become something I have to become concerned with? Ah, uh, let's check gas overlays. Yes, it is. Ah! This is why I should have a gas pump approach. No, no, wait, wait. We can stress test this for a while. This might just be a temporary... No, it's not going to be, is it? This is going to be a low gas pressure area because all the steam is going to get sucked out, but it won't be able to push past it. And No. We'll figure something out. We will figure something out. There's ways around it. Those steam pressure are... Power-wise, oh, dear Lord Jesus, what, what is that one at? That one's at 630. Yes, yes. Oh, yeah. I think we're going to fast-forward this some more. I'm going to let this run in the background for a while, and we are going to get our hands on some more insulation, lots and lots and lots, so that we can extend our, uh, our fueling loops up higher to support one more rocket. I mean, I want four rockets in here, minimum. You know, we just, we, we got to do something like that. What's the temperature? 300 degrees. <laughs> Oh, Christ. Okay, no, we got this. We got this. We'll we'll, uh, we'll just skip it forward about 100 cycles. Grab our, I'll, I'll go, you know, grab some food and stuff, and uh, we'll worry about it tomorrow. Rocket installed. Lots of waiting done. I think, I think about 200 cycles have passed since the last update. But not incredibly much has changed. It's just been a more of bulking stuff up. Uh, this rocket was installed, as in the third one, or the fourth one. I couldn't install it on top of the third one. The reason being, it's actually too narrow here. It's only seven tiles wide. If I stuck the rocket engine right there, there'd be no room to put in ladder segments, which means my dupes would not be able to get past this point. So to make sure I had room to get by, I had to move the rocket up to here. A little bit unfortunate. So now it's, uh, yeah, now we have four rockets running through the silo. Also, the hydrogen's gotten completely out of hand, but uh, more on that in a bit. Uh, ooh, up here, yes. Now the siphon for the water. There's been a few changes, some modifications, some gas pumps put in. This gas pump over here is for the carbon dioxide. Where is it? Gases. You see that carbon dioxide? Carbon dioxide has a tendency to get sucked in here. And then it, it sort of collects in this corner. So what I've done is I've stuck in a gas pump. 
this gas pump here, it, it's active 24-7. It just keeps pumping. If it's steam, it temps the steam up here right under the steam turbine. If it's not steam, it gets sent down this pipe and dumped down here where it can fall down to the bottom of the, the rocket chimney, at which point it'll get sucked up by the gas pumps down there and uh, dumped into our cryo brick for freezing. These two gas pumps over here, they're actually just pumping, straight pumping a kilo of steam. I just want them pumping a kilo of steam over here so we get that extra output. We're getting a stable five kilos of water, sometimes a little bit more out of here. So we've managed to get exactly as much water as we want. This is actually working out... Yeah, that caveat here, this is working out really great. Not what I was hoping for, but it is working out really great. And there's a few little safety features that were completely unintentional that the game just gifted to me for no reason. Oh, and I'm pretty sure a meteor hit that at some point. I don't know, I, I, was, I, I let this run overnight. Um, yes, the first is this viscogel lock. It's 369 degrees. Even though the steam we're pumping in has gone up to over 400 degrees at a time, this temperature of this is very stable. It, it goes up and down very, very slowly. Reason being, it's in a vacuum. You'll notice here this gas pump is, the, the pressure of the gas gets so low by the time it gets to here that the gas pump is able to remove it all and it's just a complete vacuum over here. That is just a, an un, unanticipated side benefit that I never even knew existed. The second thing is, this gets hot. This entire chamber gets really hot. In fact, it can't keep up with all the rockets. However, there's a built-in safety off switch. Um, it's an accidental built-in safety off switch. Oh, there goes two rockets. That's going to dump in a whole lot of heat. The accidental built-in safety switch is the automation wires. It turns out once the temperature in here gets into somewhere around 7 or 800, I'm not sure precisely, the launch heat combined with the exhaust heat and all that on these exact wires here causes one of the wires to melt. Those wires are made out of steel, by the way. They're, they're not made out of, you know, some lighter metal. They're made of steel. But the combined heat just results in it melting. And that's got a melting point of 2,426 degrees. The whole temperature in the entire room doesn't get that high, but just in that specific point. And once one of these automation wires melt, either A, the signal can't get out of here into the AND gate, or B, the signal can't get into the rocket. One way or another, it shuts off the rocket. So what happened is I left this running for 100 seconds, I came back and one of the rockets had effectively shut themselves off because the safety steel melted and the rocket stopped going up and down and generating more heat and everything stabilized. That's, uh, yeah, so melting steel, using mel molten steel to help uh, safety precaution features. That's just, yeah, never saw that one coming. Yeah, down here we have a gas pump. This gas pump is one of the hardest working gas pumps in all of Dupedom. There's two gas element sensors here. If they detect hydrogen, they turn off the gas pump. Otherwise, the gas pump pe keeps pumping. This is pumped for a long time. It drained out all the gases on the map. Well, not all of them, but quite a bit. The entire map is now pink. It's a fully hydrogenated map. Not partially hydrogenated, fully hydrogenated. <laughs> um, yeah, worked out pretty nicely. There's some other down here I could clean up later, but for the time being, I think that's, that's close enough to fully hydrogenated. Okay, but as for this design itself, uh, the caveat is this design is an abject failure. Uh, the reason being, there is no way a Santa Claus is going to survive in there. Look at that, it's 750 degrees. My dupes can barely go in there with Atmo suits at that temperature and not get scalded. This is, there's definitely going to be a crispy Santa Claus if he tries to climb down this rocket chimney. Yeah, the, the problem is, it's the sheer quantity of heat. There's just too much heat being generated. And this is coming from someone who's built 40 steam turbines, the entire height of the map hooked up to this thing. We still can't drain the heat out of this fast enough. These steam tur turbines up here don't even have any cooling solution hooked up to them, or don't have any... Uh, flow control. They're just sucking in 400c steam. They're, they're just straight up eating it, 5 kilos per second, sometimes a bit more, and just dumping it out. They're destroying that much heat and still unable to keep up with it. That's what, 43 steam turbines then? I think the only way to really get across just how ridiculous the amount of heat that's being generated is, if that's not enough, is uh, these. This here is our little steam cooling loop. When it comes to these uh, turbines, steam turbines over here, I, I don't know how familiar you are with the mechanics, but 10% of all the heat consumed is actually output the top. So 90% of the heat is destroyed. 10% of the heat, though, is emitted by the top of the steam turbine. You can see heat produced there is 48 point something KDTUs. Same up here. It's going, it fluctuates up and down a bit. Now, these ones are destroying a lot more heat. So they're like, yeah, they're, they're generating a lot more KDTUs. But I have, I put in installed four of these. Their job is to provide cooling to all the steam turbines up and down the map, top to bottom. And the four of them could not keep up. 
They're running super coolant, by the way. Not water, not anything like that. They're running straight super coolant, and four of them couldn't keep up. And bear in mind, they only have to destroy 10% of the heat. So if we were to, say, rip out all these steam turbines and just try and cool the steam with direct cooling using super coolant, even if we hooked up 40 aqua tuners, 40 aqua tuners running super coolant could not provide enough cooling to cool down the sheer amount of heat being generated. That's, that's the minimum amount. 40 would not do it. They might come close, but they wouldn't quite get there. That's how ridiculous this is. It's uh, the only way I could think of to make this work would be a complete overhaul. What I'd have to do is say, grab another steam turbine and uh, place it right here. Just, oh, one second, the game's a bit laggy. Place it right about there and extend this steam box on. So you'd have two steam, bur steam turbines at every level. If I had two steam turbines at every level, maybe we could keep up with this. Of course, to do that, I'd have to redo all the plumbing. I'd then uh, also have to move all these back. I'd have to move the water tank. I'd have to move the liquid oxygen and hydrogen production. Uh, I'd also have to move the farms. I'd have to move this, this. I'd, I'd probably have to squish my main base. All of those farms would have to go. Like, just there's so much stuff I'd have to move. It's just, I couldn't do it. I don't have the time. I need to start to, I need to cut back a bit on uh, the episodes. I'm going on to a new schedule and I don't think I'm going to have time to do projects this, this large scale. It's just, uh, yeah, work is just not going to allow it considering the schedule I've got at the moment. It's unfortunate, but I'm going to have to cut back to some slightly smaller scale projects. But before that, let's just have a look at this glorious hydrogen cloud. That thing is beautiful. <laughs> it's enormous, it's huge, and it's covering the whole map. I love it. But uh, before we finish off on this map, just let's just have a look at a, a few of the things. Uh, this uh, this Trekker Ranch, I'm quite happy with how it worked out. It, it generated me more reed fiber than I could possibly use. Though, yeah, I was a bit tight on the iso, re iso resin, so maybe not perfect. This is my overflow farms. Uh, they're only meant to get sheared once in here, but by this point, hydrogen has completely encased the area, which means they can get sheared multiple times. Uh, that whole room there could actually just be down here right now. I could just be dumping them in into these sections. I didn't need it because now the whole map's hydrogen. This cryo brick, I'm quite impressed with this. Uh, it, it has some silly features, but one of the ones that's absolutely amazing is the carbon dioxide. What was it? We got liquefiables here. On this map, we have 1,436 tons of ice that we have currently harvested. In carbon dioxide, we have 1,455 tons of carbon dioxide. We have more carbon dioxide than we have ice on rhyme. What the? Like, look here, there's several chunks of 25 ton carbon dioxide. This thing has been churning out carbon dioxide for well over a thousand cycles, each one of those. This petroleum boiler has been feeding it and they've just been dumping carbon dioxide. Oh, if you're trying to make one of these, remember to put uh, a metal tile beneath the spout because the carbon dioxide doesn't always uh, solidify instantly. Sometimes it, it will just come out as liquid at which point it'll hit this plate and then it will solidify. If you don't have that plate there, if you just have mesh tiles, it will drop straight down and you end up freezing your polluted water, which is bad. Also, you'll end up with carbon dioxide floating around. It just you know, it gets messy. Yeah, what else was there about this map? Oh, that was it. Water. Uh, the polluted water from here is getting dumped over this side. You can actually see from this sort of spout of polluted water. But the rest of this over here, that's... Oh, what was that? Regular, yeah, regular. The rest of this is all clean water. The salt water geyser has just been entombed and can't actually vent anymore. And the polluted water geyser has also been entombed and can't vent anymore. Also, this place is a bit toasty. The reason being we're dumping in five kilos of uh, steam chimney or rocket chimney exhaust in here. Five kilos that is coming in at 95C. And uh, the steam tur steam vents at the top of the map, the cool steam vents up there. Oof. Yeah, the cool steam vents up there are also dumping in lots and lots of water. This place has actually gotten, you know, warm. Uh, oh, I also ran into another problem, which was the toilets. The toilets started to back up because the water in there was getting so hot, it was actually starting to stifle the plants. So I just dumped the excess water into space. I don't need the water anymore. I have far far, far too much water, far too much power, far too much everything. Uh, that's above 500 kilos? Wait, below 500 kilos. Above? Below. You know what? Let's just, uh, let's just disable that building. We, we don't want it. Yeah. Um, next up for this map, I was going to try and, uh, melt the core and turn it into a magma, but that, that will take a while. First, I want to, I want to make my duplicates happy. Uh, I've been working them to the bone and this they, they really went all out for this rocket chimney. I mean, they have to run. If they want to access it, they have to get in up the top up here into the uh, the water siphon and then come all the way down these ladders. And it's not like we can make plastic ladders in here. I should maybe put in some fireposts. No, no, no. 
what I want to do is I want to get them all a really nice, you know, uh, some stuff they can do on the side. I want to get all the recreational buildings. We we don't even care about the power costs. Power costs are not something that this base is concerned with anymore. Where's our uh, energy production here? 60 kilowatts. Power production, 60.37 kilowatts. Every single steam turbine is flat out here. All of them. They're all just maxed out. It's it's ludicrous. It's absolutely ludicrous. Even this, these ones here that are running the, the aqua tuners, they're also maxed out. Everything is maxed out. There is just a ridiculous amount. We have five aqua tuners running super coolant that are cooling the, the steam turbine tops. All of them are maxed out. We just have ludicrous amounts of power. Yes, and the game is chugging like crazy. But anyway, I think uh, we'll cut out the rocket chimney there. Next up, we'll be just uh, taking care of some minor issues. Uh, de dealing with the cooling and the regolith. Uh, I might even... I could probably just decommission this whole section. I don't even need it anymore. Um, but there's, there's no point keeping it. I don't need the solar power, that's for sure. I think I might just decommission that and get straight into doing some recreational buildings. Lots and lots of recreational buildings. I want to have the happiest duplicates it's possible to have. We're going to max them out on everything. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this uh, rocket chimney experience. Uh, oh, apologies for not getting an episode out last Friday. It's just uh, I wanted to try and get this episode done and get everything finished. And there was no way I could have got it done by, uh, on time by uh, last Friday. But uh, hope you enjoyed and uh, good luck.